Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be a Fly With Me style video. I haven't done one of those in a very long time, and in fact, I haven't even been in Orbiter 2010 in, I think, two months or close to it. It's been a while. Today is June 6th, 2014, and as we get going here, I'll talk a little bit about why I've been away from Orbiter for so long. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. Uh, we are in the XR5. This is a default configuration. Comes with the XR5. Uh, comes with the XR5 installation. This is the takeoff to ISS scenario, but we're not going to go to the ISS. We're going to just circumnavigate the globe. I did this in my very first fly with me, fly with me number one. I just went around the world in the XR2. So I thought I'd do the same thing in the XR5. Now we're pretty much ready to go. Let me get down to the bottom panel. External cooling's off, so we're sitting here on the runway wasting resources, burning through the APU. And we have pitch control on, or rather we have surface controls on. We have uh, RCS modes off. So I believe we're ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and open the uh, scram doors now. And since I'm not really in a hurry to uh, to do like a speed run here or anything, I'm not going to engage the scram engines while I'm sitting here on the runway, but we'll get going here. Okay, so f let me just also check one more thing here. Okay, just checking to make sure my keyboard, uh, my joystick controls are mapped. Um, I have a program that runs in the background that makes sure that when I press buttons on the joystick, it maps to something like for example, the air brake. And if that's not running, then I don't have any use of my joystick other than the, the pitch and yaw, and so I need to make sure that's running. Okay, here we go. Throttle up, full power on the main. Warning, AF control services and because I turned off. AF control off, or turned the AP off momentarily, had to return V1. that back on. Okay, there's V1. Rotate. And at rotate call out, we cut the throttle back so we don't overstress the gear. And we want to get up to at least uh, 20 or 30 meters, I find, before we lift the landing gear. gear up. And there's actually a reason for that. Let me change the HUD color. Gear up and okay, now we're going to go to, actually, since we're on this runway, we need to pitch right. We're going to go to about 90 degrees. I actually don't know what the ideal heading is for circumnavigating the globe. You don't, 90 isn't ideal, I do know that. There's actually a calculation you can do to determine when you're going from one point on the Earth to the other, you can take into account the rotation of the Earth to determine you know, what heading you want to fly to. And uh, Dimitri actually wrote a whole PDF on that and posted it on Orbiter Forum. And I have it, but it wasn't written with the idea that you would be circumnavigating the globe at orbital velocity. It was written with the idea that you might be going from point A to point B with a rough uh, velocity of like 2,000 meters per second. So the, that's, and that's one of the issues with that calculation is that it, it's dependent on your velocity, obviously, because the faster you're going, the less time it takes you to go from point A to point B. Therefore, the Earth will not have rotated as much since you're going faster. Okay, so anyway, let me pay attention here for just a moment. So just pitching up here at the normal amount. Okay, we get up high enough so I can change the HUD color back to something else. Green's good. So yeah, anyway, 90 degrees isn't necessarily the best, although I actually do want to pitch up here a little bit more. But uh, we'll use uh, Glide Slope MFD here in a little bit to help us determine, you know, how to get a better heading. But we're not doing, you know, atmospheric flight where we're gonna, you know, go up to a high speed, go inverted, and fly all the way around the world. I've actually, wa I've actually wanted to do that. I did it a couple times in the XR2, but it's it's pretty time consuming, and I just basically got bored because you're, you're having to spend, you can't do any time warp, obviously, when you're you know, at 70, you know, at 70 kilometers, and you're just trying to keep the vessel right there at the atmosphere, so you have to spend the whole time at you know, regular 1x, and, and it takes, even, even at 
you know, 11,000 or 12,000 meters a second, it's still gonna take you quite some time to make that, to make that trip. Okay, there's Mach 2, and at Mach 3, we'll start scram. Because we are going for orbital, we are going for orbital altitude and orbital velocity here. This flight actually, in terms of the video, it really shouldn't take that long. So uh, one of the reasons I've, I think I said I was going to talk a little bit about why I've been away from Orbiter for the last couple of months, and, it, and that's something that my YouTube channel doesn't actually notice. Let me uh, oh, start the scram. So engaging the scram, bringing the throttle back, and yeah, usually when I'm away from Orbiter for quite a while, people on the YouTube channel, just, they're not even going to notice that because I still post videos once a week, at least once a week, and sometimes I'm able to do two or three or four, but lately, lately I've definitely had to cut back to just one video a week because I'm actually going to have to speed up a little bit more. I'm noticing my velocity is actually going down. moment that should do it we're over a thousand meters a second now and I'm just waiting to make sure that the scram engines are actually making us go faster <laughs> yeah we're speeding up it's a pretty slow process but we are gaining velocity now so that means I definitely don't want to climb anymore at the moment uh, anyway, trying to continue on with that thought, I am able to keep a consistent video schedule for the fact that when I record videos, I generally record a lot all at once, and then I have a like a video queue or a video backlog, and that video backlog allows me to con keep a consistent schedule, which I think is very important. I think it's far more important to keep a consistent schedule than it is to upload you know, a ton of videos all at once and then nobody hears from you again for two or three months and then you upload a bunch of more videos. I would much rather have one or two new videos coming out every week. Um, there are some people that have actually commented, you know, oh man, I really would like to see that whole series. Can you just post it now? And it's like, you know, I, I would love to do that and I understand why people want me to do that, but if I do, then I'm going to have a big blank spot for, for a month or two or maybe even three months where you guys aren't going to see any new videos at all. So that's why I don't like to do that. But the the back in March, well, th this actually goes back a long time. It goes back years. But right after the uh, lung transplant that I had last year, you know, once I started getting healthy again, very quickly, I started thinking about, well, what am I going to do going forward? Because I'm not sitting here at home, stuck in a chair, tied to an oxygen machine and a, and a ventilator at night. So you know, I have some semblance of health back and, you know, I finished up physical therapy. So I'm now, you know, I now have a lot of time to do what I want. So I started looking into getting back into school because um, I never did finish college when I was younger. Um, really, I didn't accomplish hardly anything. I went to community college straight out of high school and I just it was a total waste of time. I didn't accomplish anything. I was goofing off. I was skipping classes all the time. I was just not in the uh, mindset. I was just not in the mindset back then to take that kind of thing seriously. So, it, so it's always been one of those like you know blank spots in my life that I've always wanted to, to, to finish, and or just actually not even finish, but go back and do. So once I started getting healthy again, you know the thought was well you know, what, what am I going to do immediately? And the idea of, you know, going back and, and getting back into the workforce just didn't appeal to me at all because I've been out of that for so long due to health that there's just this huge black hole in my resume. So if I tried to go back and, and there's, there's actually other reasons I don't want to work right away as well, because I'm still doing, you know, I'm still going in for a lot of tests and I have a big one year uh, thing coming up because because like again today's June sixth and my one year transplant anniversary is coming up on June twenty third so I'm going in for a bunch of tests for that. Watch my whole temperature here. So uh, anyway, the point is that going back to school seemed like the most logical choice. So I started looking into that originally. I think it was all the way back in December of last year, but I was still just way too caught up with 
post-transplant stuff to be able to look into it to any great extent. And then at the beginning of February, I had to go back in for another surgery on my right lung. So, but it was after that, right after that other surgery, I decided, okay, well, now's the time. Uh, now's the time that I can start looking into school again. So back in March of this year, so just uh, three months ago, I started looking into some different colleges in the area, deciding what was, you know, what I could do. And really it came down to finances. You know, I'm not a well-off guy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I would have to say it's largely in part, if not entirely. Well, I don't know what my capacity would have been if I hadn't been burdened with health problems, but at the very least, it didn't help my finances to be living with this disease and having, you know, all these problems. But so, so, you know, going, getting back into the classroom is basically, you know, what I felt like made the most sense to do right away because I could, um, you know, I could do that and it's not as stressful, I don't think, as, you know, trying to get back to work. And the thing about going back to work too is, you know, when you don't have a college degree these days and you don't have a, a lot of work experience, I mean, what, what are you going to do? What could you possibly be qualified to do? So I thought, well, it just, that just doesn't even make any sense at all. So, so yeah, uh, anyway, if I haven't said it already, I, I am back in school now. That's what I've been doing for the last, uh, for the last couple of months. Actually, I guess it actually hasn't been quite that long yet, but, um, I decided to start taking summer classes because I didn't want to wait. Uh, I felt like if I waited until fall, I might very well end up changing my mind or something. I would get preoccupied with something. So I just thought that the best thing to do would be to get started right away. Let me go ahead and turn on rotation now because I'm starting to get, starting to lose uh, control here with the atmosphere is not holding me in very well. Bring the nose down a bit. I don't want to climb too much yet because I'm still plenty cool enough for the scram engines to be doing their job. I tend to forget how much longer it takes for the XR5 to, to get up to you know, orbital speed. Um, so yeah, I'm back in school and taking, unfortunately I couldn't take all my classes in the classroom, which is what I wanted. Even though I'm a big tech guy, I really didn't want to take the classes online. But, I w but if I wanted to take a, a full-time schedule over the summer, I, was, I had to take some classes online. In the fall, it looks like I'm going to be able to take all my classes in the classroom, which I'm pretty thankful for. You know, I do, I like the idea of doing stuff online but I think it's it, for me at this point it's actually it's more enjoyable to actually get up and and go to school like physically go to school because again I've spent so I spent so many years of my life um, sit, sitting here at home you know like a prisoner basically tied to an oxygen machine and if I got up and walked to the kitchen and came back I felt like I was going to collapse so it feels really good to get up every day and get ready and leave the house and go somewhere. It, it feels really good. I'm, I'm having a really good time and, and I'm learning a lot, you know, uh, primarily math. I did have to take a, uh, I think they call it like a pre, pre-education course or something. I, when I did the testing to find out where I qualified for, for college level classes, I didn't quite qualify for college level math, which is no surprise because I've been out of the classroom for 20 years. So I've forgotten a lot of what I did know and what I did know wasn't a whole lot to begin with. Warning, scram temperature. Okay, I'm gonna have to uh, close those scram doors. Warning, scram temperature. And finish our ride to orbit with the main engine. And we're gonna go ahead and pitch up a little bit now because once you complete the scram part of your ascent, there's no need to uh, stay low down in the atmosphere like we're only at 57 kilometers because now we're just we're just getting an, an additional drag do you need to bring up orbit mfd Mach 21. but at the same time we don't want to pitch up too much because we don't want to climb too aggressively but 
coming up to orbital velocity here pretty quickly. And I can actually go ahead and dump that remaining scram fuel. Because it's just a waste. Warning. Fuel dump. And now keep an eye on Apoapsis. We're at 95 kilometers. And this is a this is enough ascent. We have a 250 meter per second vertical. Okay, backing off the main. Fuel dump. Warning. Scram fuel low. 24. Warning. Scram fuel depleted. Coming up to, uh, well, you know what, we don't even need 200 because we're going around. So we don't need to bring ourselves all the way up to 200. All right, now we can kind of coast here a little bit. Wait for the uh, back end to cool down a little bit more, then we'll open the radiator. That's what things look like on the outside. And let's do a little bit of time warp to get up a little higher. And that's good. Now we're cool enough on the back warp side that 26. we can uh, go ahead and open the radiator. It's a little early to open it, but it's okay. Switch our HUD over to orbit mode, although it really hardly matters. with time warp to speed up the radiator and now we can turn off the APU. Set the uh, joystick off to the side for a moment. We'll be grabbing it back very quickly but we do need to because we're we left here somewhere around this point and we're gonna land back at that point so we do need to bring up the other side of our orbit at least enough so that we don't crash into the ground when we come back around. Go ahead and go over to Apoapsis and do Mark that. 26. Now we don't necessarily need to or even want to circularize our orbit. Okay, only 90 seconds away from Apoapsis. Go ahead and get ready to Translation. Rotation. bring up our orbit. And we don't need to go to like the proper prograde position. There's just no need. That's good enough right there. And we probably need to bring up our apoapsis. Let me think about it. Or rather, bring up our periapsis to, I don't know, we'll just kind of feel it out. Okay, apoapsis times 20 seconds. Let's go a little farther. Okay, that's good. And now bringing up periapsis. gonna say that's good enough now actually that's actually I overdid it because really if that's about where we're landing then we're gonna have to perform a deorbit or actually you know what because if we're at let me think about this because if we're gonna come down we're gonna be coming into the atmosphere here and I really don't want that because then we'll spend a ton of time gliding so let's go ahead and bring up uh, periapsis a little bit more. Translation, rotation. And actually it would probably help if we're pitched slightly out. Because we're we're past we're past apoapsis, so we need to be pitched a few degrees out past prograde. That'll be good enough there because that's that's high enough now that when we come around through this point, we're not going to be dragging through the atmosphere. All right, actually, let me switch um, yeah over this way because these show up way better. Let's bring up map and we're going to target Cape Canaveral, which we already are. Let's also bring up base sync just to kind of see how we're doing in that regard. So target KSC which is a shortcut that I have, which you wouldn't have if you don't set up that shortcut. You would have to type it all out as Cape Canaveral. And we want the uh, equator to be set to direct. And can turn off that graphic. 
and we only need one orbit. So according to base sync MFD, we are 300 kilometers off from, from KSC. And that's what I was saying. When you take off and fly at 90 degrees, if you just want to go around the globe one time and land back at the base you took off from, 90 degrees isn't the ideal heading. We can work with this, though. We don't have to do a base alignment because we can use the atmosphere to glide, um, which is fine. But there is a way to calculate like if I want to take off from KSC and fly all the way around the globe and come back to KSC, there is a way to calculate the best heading. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if you want to go slightly uh, to the north or if you want to go slightly south. Like, for example, if you go slightly north of 90, then you'd be flying more like 85 degrees when you take off. And that way, when you, when you circumnavigate one time, when you come back around, your distance off base will be closer to zero. So let's see, the planet rotates. Um, but it's coming, yeah, I, there's a way to figure it out. I'd have to think about it more. Okay, so nothing to do at this point except basically warp time forward until we're going to come around to uh, halfway point. Because, we're again, we're not going to do a base alignment burn. I feel that's wasteful. So we're going to wait till the distance from KSC is half, which will be when it's about... 19.5 so we're getting close to that point point. and since we're getting close to that point let's go ahead translation rotation and rotate toward prograde let's rotate a little faster than that or rather rotate toward retrograde which i think i went the wrong direction and now we're halfway around uh really i don't even have to go Actually, I guess we're not quite halfway around yet. I don't even have to go retrograde, obviously. I can just go to the prograde and open the retro doors and just burn, use the retro engines while facing the prograde position. That might have even been better. Now we're halfway around because the distance is counting down. So now we're going to lower the other side of our orbit. Got to be a little careful here again because I didn't bring the PEA here all the way up to 200 so we need to, I need to watch it a little bit we need the orbit burn now you can see the uh, the PEA position coming around so we're basically at the highest point of our orbit right now PEA is coming down. And we'll go with that. Okay, turn retrograde off. And now we're going to warp time forward to at least entry interface, which isn't far away at all, considering that we are... Okay, there's entry interface. Let's go ahead and come back to real time. Translation. Rotation. Let's start rotating toward prograde. There's prograde. Okay, but we're still at 100 kilometers, and we can go down a bit more before we have to worry about, you know, closing things up. So let's get down to at least, like, 90. Mark 27 plus. Okay, there's 90 kilometers. Let's go... Back to real time, come inside, turn the APU on, close the radiator. We don't really have to close it yet, but go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, radiator's closed, and now let's, I'm just debating like a, uh, I want to turn the APU off or not because we're getting close to the point where we need to have it on. Let's go ahead and leave it on. We've got enough APU fuel. So let's uh, switch the HUD over to surface mode. Let's get ready to land or get it in a position that would uh, get us ready to land. We're coming down into the point <clears throat> of the atmosphere where we will where we will have some steering. 
pitch. So I'm turn oh. pitch controls off, turn RCS off, and we need to start gliding toward the base. And it looks like we're going to need to be banked to the left. So let's get banked to the left. Rotation. And the reason I know that, by the way, if you look at Base Sync MFD, it tells us that the time to the node is 400 seconds or, you know, 390. And it says that we need 18 seconds worth of engine burn using the full power of the main engines in order to get our bait in order to get them to alignment in the p orbit plus position so if i switch the hud over here the orbit plus positions up that way so i know that i need to be banked left and now you can see that you know the distance off base is coming down so back to surface mode here And let's go ahead and press 2. That's at the top of the keyboard, not on the numeric keypad. And we're going to set the AOA and get things ready for that. We're not ready to get into the attitude hold position yet because we still have, still have quite a bit of base correction to do. Information. APU fuel 80%. So we'll start by setting it to 45. I don't really know what it will be ultimately, but we'll start there. I guess I'm actually probably wasting APU at the moment. I don't think I really need to have it on, but we'll go ahead and leave it on for now. I think what I'll also do, because we're getting 26. we're getting a good bite out of the atmosphere, you know, here. So if I put in full up elevator trim, it will help speed up the uh, the base correction. So I'm going to do that. Full up elevator trim, and I'm going to bank aggressively over to the left. That way, I've got more bringing the off base distance down more quickly. And this video will go over 30 minutes, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to let that happen. I don't want to break this up into two parts. Actually, I take that back because landing is still a ways out. So, let me go ahead and pause here since we are actually really close to 30 minutes and we'll pick it up in the next part. If you like this video, hit the like button, please. And if you didn't like it, that's okay too. Hit the don't like button. Check for links in the description down below. I have a Facebook fan page where you can go and follow what I'm, follow my orbiter activity there. Uh, currently, as of the last check, I've got just over 200 followers on the uh, Facebook fan page. So that's starting to sort of turn into a bit of a community there, which is cool. And so check that out. Also look for a link to my FAQ that's frequently asked questions. A lot of people ask me things like what joystick do I use? What video recording software do I use? What kind of webcam do I have? And all those types of things. So check out the link for the FAQ at the very bottom of the description area and you can read all about it. And I will see you in the next video.